Hey friends, and welcome back to the College Essay Guy YouTube channel. My name is Tom Campbell. I'm College Essay Guy's community manager and a former Pomona College admission officer. And I'm here to dive into a super important topic with college admissions, personal statements. But instead of listing some tips on how to write a great one, we're actually gonna look at some of the top mistakes that I've seen students make over the years and how you can avoid them. Why? Because knowing what not to do is just as crucial as knowing what to do. So if you wanna make sure your personal statement stands out for all the right reasons, you're gonna to wanna to stick around and hear these key pointers. All right, let's dive right in. So mistake number one would be a lack of specifics. This is by far the easiest way to make your essay blend in with the rest of the crowd. But what does a lack of specificity actually look like? Okay, let's say that you want to open your personal statement with a story about your job at Target and how it's helped you develop interpersonal skills. And in your first paragraph, you write something like this. I harness salient people skills to connect deeply with others. Maybe you were thinking something like harness, cool active verb, right? Salient, unique, artsy adjective. Deeply, good adverb, right? It's good to be deep. And technically you're not wrong. These words definitely have those qualities associated with them, but your college admission reader is just gonna skim right over them. Why? Because this writing is vague. It doesn't really help them see that you're a different human from the other 50 humans they've read about who like connecting with others. This is really the reason why you wanna show versus tell in your college essays. So instead of I harness salient people skills to connect deeply with others, you might open your essay with something like this instead. Because I'm quite curious, I often engage with my customers at my target register who chat with me about their beloved rambunctious grandkids. I've asked questions that lead to stories about all kinds of pranks and family trips where these grandparents spoil their descendants. My customers remember me because I always remember them. You see what the writer did there? That writer built a mini scene. They found a series of specifics like target register and pranks and grandkids that help us experience what they've experienced. And now we're seeing this cashier, this curious cashier who sounds like they're ready to connect with new folks and build community in college. And the reader is leaning into that story a little more with their eyes a little less droopy. All right, mistake number two, too much descriptive writing. Now, don't get me wrong, you definitely should use some descriptive writing in your personal statement. Because just like specificity, it can help distinguish your story from others. But there's a fine line between painting a vivid picture and getting what I call to in the weeds, overwhelming the reader with lots of unnecessary details. So how do you know when you've crossed that line? Well, something like the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the field as I took my first steps towards the finish line might be a solid example of how to use some descriptive writing to set a scene, in this case, a race, and convey some emotion in your writing. On the other hand, something like the sun, a giant orange orb, slowly descended in the sky, melting into purple and pink hues, while the soft, delicate blades of grass brush against my legs with each little step would be considered a little bit overkill. Remember, you only have 650 words here, and oftentimes the more words that you spend getting overly descriptive, the less room you have in your personal statement for your main goals which are sharing specific details that demonstrate your skills, qualities, values, and interests, and life experiences to admission officers so that they have a solid sense of the type of person that's entering their campus. And when the ratio of descriptive writing overtakes the key sentences that contain those insights or so what moments, you're doing yourself a disservice. And see, now that's a great segue for... Mistake number three, not enough insight. Now, what does this mean? So let's imagine you are writing your personal statement about this epic fundraiser that you put on in your community, and it was a great demonstration of your leadership skills and involved lots of moving parts, and in the end, you raised $20,000, and that's it. In other words, you spend all your time giving a play-by-play -play of what you did and very little time reflecting on why it mattered to you. Your personal statement isn't just about impressing people with what you did. Remember, your transcript, your activities list, your recommendation letters, they often prime the reader with those details ahead of time before they even get to your personal statement. This is the time to let that wall of perfection down and start describing some of the important realizations you've come to based on life experiences. And this can include ups and downs. So how do you add insight? Start by answering this question for every story or example that you share in your personal statement. So what? What was the impact that this experience had on my life? What challenges did I face and how did it shape me? How will the lessons that I learned from this experience influence my future decisions and goals? These types of insights are gold and they're one of the many ways that you're going to be able to set yourself apart from everyone else who might have similar experiences to what you described, but didn't take the time to reflect on them. So if you do end up writing about that fundraiser and maybe some of the highs and lows of managing a team to help you reach that $20,000 goal, Here's an example of an insight that you may want to connect to that story. I realized that leadership didn't mean simply seeing what I thought was the best course of action for people to take and pushing them to take it. 
Instead, real leadership involved making myself obsolete, creating space for people to step into and lifting up those I was leading until they no longer needed me. Oh. All right, mistake number four, too much time digging the reader into a hole. Now, this tends to be more common among students who decide that they want to write about hardships or challenges in their life. And sometimes in describing those hardships, it can be easy for students to start to dig the reader into a hole. As in, you emphasize the struggle really heavily early on in the essay, and you don't leave much room towards the end to talk about ways that you've tried to push past them. And to be clear, it's totally okay to write about tough times you've been through. And also, side note, it's a big myth in the college application ecosphere that you have to write about substantial life traumas and hardships to stand out, which is absolutely not the case. In fact, that's why we're actually such big fans of the non-challenge-centric montage essay approach at College Essay Guy, which we're going to get into in a second. But if you do decide that you want to write about the challenge that you've overcome, remember, you have 650 words and about 15 to 30 seconds before you lose the reader's interest early on. And if you start to notice maybe more than half of your essay is about describing your challenge, that doesn't usually give you enough time to reflect and share on what you did about it and what you learned. A better approach would be to roughly aim for about a third of your essay to be about challenges and how they affected you, another third about what you did about it, and the last third can be more about what you learned and how it shaped your future goals and actions. This helps demonstrate your growth and resilience. And it also signals that the challenge is a part of your life, but it's not your entire life, which is bound to leave a lasting impression on your reader. Now, if you want a little more concrete guidance as to how to write about your challenge in your personal statement, link below, you're going to find an exercise called Feelings and Needs, which is the one-stop shop to help make sure that the ratio about your challenge and post-challenge are where they need to be. All right, and finally, mistake number five, too many vignettes, aka stories, in a montage essay. Now, if you don't know, a montage essay is any essay that weaves together different elements, experiences, objects, memories, etc., to tell a larger story. For example, you could use a montage essay technique to describe various moments in your life that have shaped your personal values. Check the link in the description of this video below to learn more about montage essays and how they can be an effective way to showcase your unique journey to colleges. All right, now back to the mistake. So too many vignettes, AKA these short self-contained stories in a montage essay can make your essay feel a little disjointed and a little more like an extended resume. Since the key slash secret sauce to a montage essay is connecting those mini stories with a common theme or through line. So for instance, this student's essay titled Skin. Right from the start, they share a quick anecdote about skin and help signal to the reader that they're about to take you on a fascinating journey. And as the essay goes on, they share many stories about their personal experiences with serious allergies, intellectual curiosity for all things medicine, their sense of humor, fear of being judged by others, and cultural identity, all with some connection to the overarching theme of skin, which helps the essay feel more cohesive and creative. All right, what's the ideal number of vignettes or stories in a montage essay? From my experience reading applications and working with thousands of students on their essays, I would say somewhere between three to five vignettes is the ideal number. Why? Well, math. With a word count of 650, three to five vignettes allows you to dedicate about 100, maybe 150 words per story, which gives you enough room to share a meaningful introduction and conclusion, which as you saw in the skin essay, is a great way to introduce your wider montage theme or framing device, along with ample room to share specific details and personal insights with each story. With less than three to five vignettes, you run the risk of being a little too overly descriptive with these particular stories. And with more than three to five, it starts to read more like an expanded resume than an essay. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more tips. And if you're looking for more individual guidance on your own personal statement writing journey, we have a team of essay specialists and coaches at College Essay Guy that work with students one-on-one -on -one every year. And sometimes we even work with students for free. Sound like something you might be interested in? Check the links below. All right, happy writing, much love, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.